All right, welcome back. So today we've got a cracker of a game to showcase um, from the FIDE World Cup in 2023, where Carlson is playing Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, Carlson is the highest rated player in the world, as many of you know, and Vasily Ivanchuk is an absolute living legend of the game. So this is um, the winner of this two-game classical mini-match advances to the quarterfinals of the FIDE World Cup. And this is the first leg of the two-game mini-match. So Carlson's white and Vasily Vanchuk's black. Let's see what happens. Um, but just a, I'm going to ruin it for you right here. So pause the video if you don't want it to be ruined. But Carlson wins the game. Surprise, surprise. The, the truly amazing thing about this game is <clears throat> the way Carlson's pieces flow together. Um, he's truly the master of harmonizing his pieces and to play someone like Vasily Ivanchuk with so much experience, 2,670 play, rated player, um, someone who Gary Kasparov feared even, um, to just be able to cut through uh, his position, his defenses, like, like a knife through butter, just is absolutely instructive to watch. So let's go ahead and crack into the game. So D4 by Magnus Carlsen, D5. A little bit of a non-committal knight f3. And here Vasily thought on his second move for a few minutes. And you can see by the clock, he thought for about three minutes before playing the flexible e6. Sort of saying, hey, Carlson, you, I want to see what you've got up your sleeve. You play the next move and we'll see what happens. So Carlson plays c4. And after knight f6, <coughs> Carlson plays g3, his favorite Catalan opening from the Queen's Gambit declined. And play continues down the normal path, bishop b4 uh, check, bishop d2, and bishop back <coughs> to e7. Essentially just getting that white bishop on an annoying square, d2, because it blocks both the queen and the knight. Um, and after white gets his bishop fianchetted on g2, ready to castle, Vasily Vanchuk plays this uh, pretty solid move, c6. It's, it's not the most common move. The most common move would be simply taking the pawn and saying, hey, look, if you're going to give up that pawn, I'm going to take it and let's see what you've got. Um, but after c6, Vasily's saying, hey, look, let's play a bit more solidly and out of the mainline theory. So once Carlson plays queen c2, defending that c4 pawn, bishop uh, knight bd7, getting the bishop out to f4, taking a couple of key squares away from black's position, c7 and d6. Vasily castles, and Carlson plays this <coughs> computer-like, alpha zero-like move, h4. So if we go back slightly, in this position, white's got probably three most natural moves. One is knight c3, one is knight bd2, and one is just castling kingside. And what Carlson is saying with a move like h4 is, hey, I don't mind weakening my king slightly uh, because I, I want to really capture that g5 square and in some cases start an attack against your king. Or just pretty much say, hey, look, I'm, I'm here for your throat. I'm here for your king. And I'm not going to settle into um, slow lines and play for a draw. I'm playing for a win. Uh, Vanchuk takes, exchanges the pawns in the center. Knight d5, hitting that bishop on f4, and white really doesn't want to let black ruin his pawn structure, so he gets the bishop out. This move, bishop g5, is only possible after that pawn move to h4. And Carlson's saying, hey, look, that this dark square bishop of mine is going to be pretty awkward to play with. I don't really have any great squares to keep it on, so how about I exchange it for your only good bishop and leave you with... <laughs> Uh, light squared bishop that's blocked by your whole uh, pawn chain and knight. So after striking out in the center with e4, Carlson gains some space and pretty much says, hey, if you want to, come come trade the queens. Um, and after this, you're going to have to move your knight back. e7 recommended by Stockfish. And let's take stock of the position you're left with a massive space disadvantage, very cramped position as black. 
an absolute hole of a square on d6 where I'm just going to set up a set up an outpost for my knight in some cases. You can't get your pawn break e5 in. c5 again, you're going to get it in at some point, but you're just going to increase the scope of my bishop. And look at the bishops. You've got a horrible one on c8, and I've got a potential monster on f uh, on g2. So Vasily says, hey, look, I don't actually like that queen trade for me. So I'm going to go knight b6. The queen drops back to c3, keeping an eye on these two critical squares because these are the two pawn breaks that black wants to do to open up his position. And after e5, Carlson had a bit of a long think. He thought for about 10 minutes, I think it was. Yep, 10 minutes. And he castled. So in this position, before we go into the castled main line, why doesn't Carlson simply take? Well, if he takes, black's most likely going to recapture the pawn at some point with a rook on e8. And if white takes it with the knight on e5, there's a lot of tricky situations where um, once this happens, white can really find themselves with an open king pretty quickly in the middle of the board. And black gains compensation for the, that pawn. But more importantly, black's got this sneaky move, knight a4, hitting the b2 pawn and the queen. Where's the queen going to go to stop any checks from the queen on b4? Also protect the pawn on e5 and the pawn on b2. Well, the queen has to come up here. And then after simply playing this move, b5, which kind of looks strange, black's actually got a really good position because... What are you going to do is white. Black's threatening to play rook d8, bishop g4, or bishop e6, and really get very quick play with his pieces. Again, he's always got these sneaky threats of queen b4. Um, the knight is always hitting that pawn, and you're going to eventually win that pawn back in the center. Your queen's going to be in a great position in the center, and you're actually... Better here. Stockfish says it's negative um, 0.48 for black. So Carlson says, hey, look, you know what? Good move, Vasily. Nice move playing e5. I'm going to avoid that one. And I'm going to castle my king into safety. And after the trades in the center, Vasily is actually slightly better out of the opening. Very, very, very slightly better. But as black, he's solved all his problems. He's got some scope for that bishop, which used to be bad with the pawn on e6. Um, and his, his rook's got natural development on d8, hitting the queen. His queen's in a flexible position. His knights will probably swing onto e6 um, or other similar squares, depending on how the pawns start moving. And black's got a good position. So Vasily continues on to c5 with his knight, hitting that e4 pawn. And this is where things start to become brilliant from a Magnus Carlsen perspective. So straight out of the opening, Magnus Carlsen's got an you know, equal position, but he's actually not come out of the opening with an advantage as white. Magnus Carlsen here plays rook c1, saying, hey, if you want to take my pawn, go ahead, take it. But I'm just going to go rook e1. And once you defend your knight, because it's pinned to your queen, I'm going to play knight c3, and then once you attack my queen, I'm going to go knight uh, queen b3. And very, very soon, I'm going to trade, trade, trade. And then once all these trades happen on e4, we're going to get into an end game that's still pretty equal, um, but I like my chances as Magnus Carlsen um, being one of the greatest end game players of all time. Now, funnily enough, this is probably what Ivanchuk should have gone with. Um, it probably keeps his position a bit more active and a bit more fluid and increases his chances. But he plays this awkward move, knight to a6. Now, knight e6 could have been played, getting his knight there, but it, it probably prematurely blocks the bishop off. Vasily wants to get the bishop to g4, so he plays the knight on knight to a6. And Carlsen simply continues getting his final piece out. And once Vasily gets his bishop out, we're entering the middle game pretty quickly. Now here, Carlsen says, I'm going to move my bishop to f1 and redeploy it along this diagonal. 
this is where Carlson's genius really kicks in, and you're going to see how how strong this guy is, really. Because Vasily Ivanchuk is no walk in the park, and yet he could not coordinate his pieces throughout this whole game. And Carlson just beautifully harmonized all his pieces. So hitting that knight on a6, white's threat is pretty obvious. Not, uh, bishop takes on a6, b takes on a6, and then rook snatches up that pawn and absolutely destroys that queenside structure of, of blacks. So Vasily hits the queen, gets his rook out. Once the queen drops back, drops his knight back. And here again is white. You're thinking, all right, well, I've got my pieces out. And if you're Magnus Carlsen, you're thinking, how can I play my pieces to their best optimal squares? Well, he says the last piece that's need needing to be activated is this rook on a1. It's doing absolutely nothing. How can I activate it? Simply by playing a4. With the threat of a5, a6, and absolutely crushing black's queenside pawn structure in the same manner as bishop f1. Somehow he's managed to coordinate that rook on a1 with that bishop on f1. Knight moves back so it doesn't get hit with a tempo. And after a5, uh, black can simply play a6 or pretty much has to. Otherwise, white's going to play the crushing a6. And again, you know, let's just say black plays his king here. After this, takes, 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 takes. I mean, look at that. You know, it's it's absolutely horrible. Even even rook c6 takes, or sorry, rook takes on c6. Black's going to lose these two pawns pretty quickly. This is a passed b pawn, which is in the end game going to keep going up and up and up. And this is truly horrible for black. Um, so black is forced essentially to play a6, but not before he made a bit of a stumble. So a6 would have been the move to play here. Um, or funnily enough, rook fe8, suggested by Stockfish. Vasily makes a bit of a strategic mistake. He takes the bishop, he takes the knight with the bishop on f3. Um, but that bishop's actually quite important for black. <clears throat> Even though it's a bad bishop, these knights sort of are clumsy because they hit each other. They're, they're in each other's way. White doesn't really have any great squares for them right now. Whereas black's bishop is black's best piece, essentially. These knights are pretty... Um, they don't really play much of a role in the game at the moment. Vasily's still got to decide how to get them into play. He's just been moving them around aimlessly for now, just reacting to white. But once he trades this, Carlson's just got the better end of the piece trade. Um, and now Vasily locks the queen side up with a6, but Magnus Carlson just plays rook a4 and says, hey, look, well, now that your bishop's gone, this whole color complex is quite weak now. And I'm going to play pawn to e5, swing my rook across, apply pressure to your king, threaten queen takes h7 because it's pinned, and suddenly I've got an attack out of nowhere. This rook was on a1 a moment ago. And what are your knights doing, by the way? They're doing absolutely nothing. So after Vasily got his rook into the game, Magnus Carlsen continued with e5, pretty much saying, hey, look, I'll give you that d5 square for your knight. I see you're struggling with your knights. I'll do some charity work. I'll give you that square. I'll move my queen out of the way. Lock your queen to the defense of this b7 square. But what I'm going to gain in exchange, because I want something in, in return, I've got access to this whole rank with my rook. I'm going to pose problems there for you. And also, I'm going to play once Ivarchuk, Ivarchuk plays his knight to a7. Again, just very clumsy positioning of his knights. I'm going to play bishop d3 because the plan is pretty clear. You keep trying to get your knights to good squares. I'm dropping that back, and now I'm threatening a classic battery on the b1 h7 diagonal. And once my queen, let's just say Vasily plays rook here, I'm getting my queen to c2. And once you block the maiden 2 on queen h7 and queen h8, with g6, that pawn on h4 that I put on move 8 or whatever it was, I'm busting your king side open with h5. So you do not want to let me play h5. How do you stop me playing h5? 
well, you've got to move your pawn to h5. And now that your pawn's on h5, that g5 square is awfully weak. So my knight's pretty protected if I move it there, right? Well, yeah, why don't I just play that? So after rook e1, getting his rook to a better position, and again, Vasily doesn't know what to do with his knights. He's just shuffling them around aimlessly. Queen c2, g6, bishop a2, applying pressure to that absolutely weak f7 square, and threatening queen takes g6 because of the pin. And absolutely winning the game. Black has to play king g7, and now I'm going to play my knight to g5. That square that you gave up by moving your pawn forward, which I forced you to do with this sneaky g2, f1, d3, b1 maneuver by my bishop. Rook f8 to protect that f7 square. And I'm simply going to go e5, e6, e6, e5 to e6, bleh, and blast your king, king side open with. The removal of your f pawn. So once Vasily pushes that f pawn to f6, what's the weak square that it's created? You guessed it, g6. Bishop drops, threatening to take. Vasily closes up the position. And if you're thinking, why didn't he just take the knight? It's a free knight. Well, there's never a free lunch when it comes to Magnus Carlsen, because your whole position falls apart pretty quickly. Um, the rook's coming in. You can defend it by going here, but after bishop e4, rook e5, and f4, you can't take, because I take your rook. And what are you going to do here? Your best move is knight here, and after take, 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 you're getting absolutely slaughtered in this position. So you do not want to do that. So Vasily locks up the position. And here he's extremely weak on these dark squares now because black's pawns are on these light squares. So queen d2 swings the queen, queen onto the dark color complex. The rook comes out onto d5 trying to stabilize the position, but that actually takes the square away from that knight. And again, what in the world are black's knights doing? They're doing absolutely nothing. The whole game they've done nothing. They've just... They've just changed positions they've moved but they've not improved their position whereas Magnus Carlsen's pieces look at them this is on an optimal square this is on an optimal square 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 everything everything's where it needs to be there's no better placing placement of white pieces so after rook d5 bishop a2 Rook c5, attacking the queen, queen e3, knight d5, and queen dropping back to d2. What in the world is black's rook doing here on c5? Isn't that a trapped rook? Yes, it is. So after rook f6, again, black just has nothing, no plan of any sort. This pawn is not going anywhere because it's protected by this knight, which is not going anywhere because it's protected by this pawn, which Magnus Carlsen moved on whatever, move 8 or whatever it was. B4. What are you going to do with your rook? have to move it out of the way. And I simply take your center knight and collapse your position. I win a pawn. My queen's absolutely a monster in the middle of the board. Your pieces have no coordination at all. Whereas mine are just absolute monsters. Vasily tries the last bit of counterplay, trying to open some lines against White's king. But Magnus Carlsen simply takes the pawn. White Black can't even take this because after Queen e5, um, essentially threatening to take the rook. If you if you go here, I simply hit you this way. And if you protect it like this, I simply take, take e7, d6, a queen, I win your knight, I'm threatening all sorts of things again, um, b5, getting the other rook in, your king's absolutely trapped, it can't go anywhere, I'm threatening to checkmate you as well, so this is absolutely lost, so what does 
black two, he plays rook f5, and then after queen e4, you can see Vasily resigned the game. He's got an absolutely hopeless position. White's simply going to go either rook on d1 across onto the seventh rank or the other rook, depending on how he wants to do it, depending on what the best, um, what black plays. He's going to get a rook on d7. He's going to shatter you across the seventh rank. This pawn's going to keep being a thorn in your throat, if not queening. Um, this knight's not going anywhere. This queen's dominating everything. Your rooks are a absolute shambles. Your knight hasn't even factored into the game. And Vasily just had enough, and on move 42, he resigned. So Magnus Carlsen had another spectacular win in round five of, of the FIDE World Cup. And he... Um, he essentially sets himself up very much so to um, just the draw in the second leg puts him through into the quarterfinals of the FIDE World Cup. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that uh, game between Magnus Carlsen and Vasily Ivanchuk um, and hope you took something from it apart from just Mag Magnus Carlsen being an absolute beast. And let me know what you thought in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.